Hello Heathens at home and welcome to another arts broadcast. So it is Monday and that means we are going to be doing a new arts and crafts activity today. So what I thought we would do today is a slightly longer drawing instruction. So as you know, I've been filming some little shorts for the Mark and Sarah show. Um, and these are all based on improving our drawing skills. So in some of these, what I've been doing is showing you how to build up knots, as in like Celtic knot work. So we've done a star and we've done a heart. I don't know if the heart has actually been uh, broadcast yet, but we have been doing some knot work designs. So what I thought I would do for today's broadcast is something a little bit more complicated. And what we're doing is this interlocking or interlacing wreath. So we did a very rough wreath for one of our other heart videos, but that was very much a drawing freehand. This is a instruction where you are going to build by doing the same action over and over and over to create this complex interlacing, interlocking wreath knotwork design. Um, but instead of trying to draw it freehand, we're going to show you the steps point by point of how to build it up to make it easier. So hopefully, as you can see, the two interlocking circles don't actually, they're not, it's not one circle, it's two circles, if that makes sense. So I've coloured in one of the strands that interlaces with the other. So to make this work, you have to use an even number of points around the circle that you draw. If you use an odd number of points, when you lock everything together, when you draw everything together, what you'll end up with is an interlacing and interlocking single circle. So then if you try and colour it in, everything's going to end up coloured in the same because it's one continuous line. So if you use an odd number, it's one continuous interlacing circle. If you use an even number, you'll have two circles interlacing or interlocking with each other. So that's why I've coloured in one of them green here. So to get started, what you're going to need is a pencil, a pen. You may need a rubber. I don't think you will. And you need something circular to draw around. Now you can use a compass. A compass is a really good way of doing this. But if you don't have one, don't worry. Just use something like a bowl like I am. So what we're going to start off by doing is drawing our circle. I'm going to move that out of the way and hopefully you guys will be able to see exactly what it is that I'm doing. So I'm just lining this up because I actually have a crib sheet underneath that makes it easier for me to show you how to do this. You may also need a ruler if you want to make your points very, very even, but you can do it roughly. So I'm going to draw a circle first of all, and I'm going to do that in pencil. Okay, so now that we've got our circle, and hopefully you can see that, if you can't, I do apologise, but we're going to move on to using pen in a minute. So hopefully it will all make sense. So you've got a circle. You're going to divide your circle up into 12 points. Now, as I say, you can do this roughly or you can use a ruler. If you're going to use a ruler, think of it like you're doing the points on a clock. That's how many points you need. So you start by doing top and bottom, which is 12 and 6. And put a mark. And then do each side, which would be 3 and 9. like so. And then you want to do 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11. So I'm going to just roughly mark those out. Now they don't have to be precise. You can wiggle these about a bit if you think they're not quite right. So I'm just making some marks to roughly have 12 points 
around my circle. So to start doing our interlacing or interlocking knot work wreath circle, what we're going to start by doing is drawing arrows at each point all the way around our circle. So you want them, it's just like a triangle without the base drawn in. So I'm just simply drawing little arrows all the way round. Do we check that you can see that? Yes. So I'm doing them all in one direction. And they don't have to be exact. Your wreath, I'm kind of thinking of it as it's like twigs or branches interlocking. And if you wanted to make it really organic and decorate it afterwards, I think flowers and leaves and things like that would be really lovely on this. So as I say, drawing these arrows all the way round. So now that we have 12 arrows all going around the 12 points on our circle, we're going to go in and we're going to put arrows going the other way, kind of tucked inside the other arrows. So we're going to make little diamonds, basically. Hopefully, you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. I'm actually wondering whether I should try and zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit clearer. Like so. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to do, make a little diamond inside of the arrows, like so. And I think that shows up on the camera fine. So we're just going to do these little diamonds by doing arrows going the other way inside of our first arrows. They don't want to be too big. You do need to leave a little bit of space. So we've done that all the way around. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make these arrows look much more like actual arrows. So what we're going to do from the inside of an arrow head between the point and where we've made the diamonds, we're going to draw a line that comes around our circle and then makes a parallel line with the previous arrowhead. So I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to draw lines like this. And we're going to do that top and bottom. So we're going to take a line and follow the curve round and make a line that comes up parallel to the previous arrowhead, like so. Now, the felt tip that I'm using is actually a little broad for this, but I couldn't find a nice fine liner at short notice. I may have to order some for work. But anyway, we're going to go from the inside of the next arrowhead. We're going to take a line following the curve and then bringing the line parallel up next to the previous arrowhead. I'm going to do the same top and bottom. And we're going to do this all the way around. So from the inside of the next arrowhead, we're drawing a line that follows the curvature and then makes a parallel line to the previous arrowhead, like so.
So as you can see, this is a very repetitive drawing style. You're doing the same step over and over and over again. Now, this is starting to look a lot more like a wreath. Sorry, I will just recenter that for you. Where's better? There, there, okay. So looking a lot more like a wreath. And we only have one more step basically to do to connect everything else up. So what we're going to do now, these open ends at the end of our arrows, what we're going to do is we're going to continue them on and bring them round to meet what's inside of the previous arrowhead. So what I mean is doing this. So that these lines meet these lines underneath this bit here. And we're going to do that for everything. So I'll turn it round again. So this open end here is coming down to meet this piece here as if it's going underneath the branch. Like so. And we're going to make everything join up. So you're just doing very simple curved lines so that the open ends meet where the junction's going to go underneath that previous arrowhead. And we're going to keep turning our work because I say turning your work is absolutely fine if it makes it easier for you to draw. And it makes it easier for me to draw, absolutely. Now I am thinking that I may take this home and show our daughter and I may try and do a slightly more complicated version just for fun to show you how you can make the interlacing a little more complicated which I think could be really cute and really fun um, and what I'll do if I do that is I'll put everything in our blog post because what I'm doing with these new drawing instructions is that I'm writing blog posts and instructions with step-by-step -step photographs for each one. So when the series of star videos has been used, I will be posting the videos from YouTube and then I will be posting the blog posts as well. But they have been made for the Mark and Sarah show. So they get priority first off. So, just repeating what I've already said, these open ends of the kind of the end of the arrow, not the head of the arrow, the open ends, what we're doing is we're taking, continuing the line in a curve to meet the arrow head where the diamond comes in inside. So that it looks like it's going underneath the next strand. doesn't matter which way you draw your lines as long as they all connect together. And we've got one more to do. And that is our completed interlocking or interlacing knot work wreath or circle. Now I really enjoyed learning how to do this one. I think when you look at it like this it seems really really complicated and how on earth would I draw that. However I have made step-by-step -step instructions. Actually if I zoom out that might help. Oops I'm zooming in. Apologies guys. I'll zoom out so you guys can see. I have made step-by-step -step instructions of how you start with your arrows and then you put your little other direction arrowheads inside, you make your little diamonds and then how we use the lines going from the arrowhead to the previous one and then how we join everything up on the final step. So I will be adding those instructions to a blog post for you and it will be posted hopefully just after the show today. So I really hope you've enjoyed this one guys and I will see you all again next week 
for another Arts and Crafts broadcast. See you guys. Bye.